Okay, so we know that one of the powerful things about a chemical equation is that it allows us to make predictions about amounts of chemicals. For instance, in this hypothetical reaction, we know that if we have two moles of A, we will need one mole of B to react completely with it, and that when that has happened, we'll have three moles of C, the product. But no one has a setup in their lab that automatically measures moles. Design project for you, come up with one that does. What we do have, generally, are setups to measure mass and volume. So in order to make predictions that are really useful and measurable, we need to convert our mole predictions into mass or volume predictions. Happily, we already have a strategy for doing this. You know that it's possible to convert moles of a substance into mass or number of particles or volume, if it's a gas. The conversion factors are either a proper constant, like Avogadro's constant, or a constant under defined conditions, such as the gas molar volume, or can be calculated from information on the periodic table, like the molar mass. So what we need to do is combine this skill with our understanding of mole ratios, so that we can move freely between quantities of various reactants and products, regardless of what unit we're measuring in. So let me take this conversion map and rearrange it slightly. I'm putting it all over on the left here, and I'm going to specify that I'm talking about one particular chemical. Let's just label it A. Then I can reflect the map over to the other side of the page for another chemical, B. So on the left-hand side of the page, I have the conversions that will let me move between mass, particles, volume, and moles of A. And on the right, I have the same thing for B. And how do we relate A and B to each other? Well, if they're both involved in a chemical reaction, and we can write the equation for that reaction, then we know the mole ratio in which they react, the stoichiometric ratio. So what we've done now is summarize what we know so far into a map. And I'm going to honor Aaron Sams and Jonathan Bergman here, who are the chemistry teachers in the US who came up with the idea of flipped learning in the first place. And I'm going to borrow their name for the map, which is called the land of the mole. So what this diagram does is map out the calculation path that you would take for any given stoichiometric problem. For instance, if you had a certain mass of reactant and you wanted to know what mass of product it would give, you would convert the mass of the reactant to moles, you'd use the mole ratio to calculate the moles of product that would be produced, and then you'd convert the moles of product into a mass. Quick tip for you, the most common conversions that you're going to need are the mass-mole conversions. You do need to know how to do the particle and volume conversions, but in terms of calculations that you're most likely to need as you work in the lab, the mass-to-mass -mass calculations will be far and away the most useful. So let's try a real example. We're going to perform this reaction here, lead nitrate and potassium iodide, reacting to give potassium nitrate and a bright yellow precipitate of lead iodide. And we're told that 0.831 grams of that precipitate, the lead iodide, is produced. And we are to work out what mass of potassium iodide must have reacted. So we have the balanced equation already. Now let's figure out what calculations are needed. Well, we're dealing with lead iodide and potassium iodide. And we have 0.831 grams of lead iodide. So the steps of the calculation are we need the molar mass of lead iodide. Uh, we'll then use that to work out the moles of lead iodide. We'll use the mole ratio from the equation to work out how many moles of potassium iodide must have reacted. Uh, we'll then need the molar mass of potassium iodide, and then we'll use that to convert the moles of potassium iodide to a mass. You might like to pause the video now and see if you can work through those calculations yourself. So let's work through those steps. First, we'll calculate the molar mass of lead iodide. Look the information up on the periodic table. Lead is 207.2 grams per mole and iodine is 126.9 grams per mole. So the molar mass you should get is 460.8 grams per mole for PBI2. Now let's use this to calculate the moles of lead iodide. So we take 0.831 grams of lead iodide uh, put it over 1 and divide by the molar mass. Remember that dividing is the same as multiplying by the inverse. So that puts the grams on the bottom and allows us to cancel those units out. 
and this calculation gives us 0.0018304 moles of lead iodide. Notice that at each step I'm writing down exactly what I just calculated. This is what I mean by annotating your calculations. This will prevent me from mixing up values later on and makes it easier to spot or track down mistakes when you're checking your work. OK, now we know the moles of lead iodide, we can use the mole ratio from the equation to work out how many moles of potassium iodide must have reacted. You can see that the ratio is 1 lead iodide to 2 potassium iodides. So we need to multiply the moles of lead iodide by 2. And that gives us 0 0.0036068 moles of potassium iodide. Notice also that I'm maintaining plenty of sig figs as I work through the calculation. If you round off during a calculation, you can introduce rounding errors that distort your final value. If you don't want to write down all the digits on the calculator, just make sure you write down more sig figs than you'll need in your final answer. You can see because we started with 0.831 grams, our final answer is going to be rounded to three sig figs. So I'm keeping at least five in my calculations until the final answer. OK, last step. We have the moles of potassium iodide. We just need to convert that to a mass. For that, we need the molar mass of potassium iodide. So again, we consult the periodic table and we work out that the molar mass of Ki is 166.0 grams per mole. Now we convert the 0 0.003608 moles of Ki to a mass by multiplying by the molar mass. This time the moles cancel out, leaving grams. which gives us 0.59873 grams, which rounds to 0.599 grams of potassium iodide. And that's our final answer. Great, let's just try one more. Again, pause and try and work this out for yourself. We're looking at the ammonia reaction and we have the balanced equation here. And we're told that we're reacting 7.1 litres of nitrogen gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, and we are to calculate the mass of ammonia produced. So let's again sketch out the calculation path. We know the volume of nitrogen, that's 7.1 litres, and we're going to use the molar volume, 22.4 litres per mole, to convert that into moles of nitrogen. The mole ratio from the equation will give us the moles of ammonia produced and we'll then need to work out the molar mass of ammonia so that we can convert the moles to a final mass of ammonia. So let's try that out. First convert the volume of the nitrogen to moles. We know the volume is 7.1 litres and the molar volume is 22.4 litres per mole. So we line those up and divide by the molar volume. Remember, it's the same as multiplying by the inverse. The litres cancel out and that gives us 0 0.3170 moles of nitrogen gas. Second, we'll convert those moles of nitrogen into moles of ammonia and we need the mole ratio. We look at the chemical equation and we see that the mole ratio is one mole of nitrogen to two moles of ammonia. So we need to multiply our moles of nitrogen by two. And that gives us 0.6339 moles of ammonia. Next, we need to convert moles of ammonia to a mass, so we need the molar mass of ammonia. We check the periodic table and we can calculate that the molar mass of ammonia, NH3, is 17.034 grams per mole. We take the moles of ammonia, multiply by the molar mass, the moles cancel out and that gives us 10.798 grams, which we round to 11 grams because we started with a value that had two sig figs. Great. Now, remember, like anything, this gets easier with practice. Make sure you put in the practice so that this aspect of chemistry becomes a simple calculation task rather than a source of stress.